new haircut. Finally, and the big hair afro I was getting at this point, and I was, and I just need to get this cut. And now some people think I look Amish. But enough about that. Let's get right into things and talk about the match that everyone's been wanting to talk about. CM Punk versus MJF. Uh, not a lot of text. Uh, Maxwell Jacob Friedman, but I'm not spelling all that. Anyways. Okay. So, this is the match that people have been wanting to see for a long past couple of months. Ever since Full Gear, we've been getting this build up and building and building and building and building, but never got to live up. And we got all this, this human and growth and whatnot for the storyline. And I am just like, yes, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Especially when you remember that MJF as a kid, what is seen with CM Punk, which is like, I'm pretty sure MJF is all giddy inside knowing I get to work with one of my idols. I get to work with one of my favorites. And the fact that he lives in this timeline. So, yay. But yeah, it was, it's awesome that we're gonna get this match between the two and they had had built this up for months. Like, I like as much as people were hoping we get to Revolution for this match, I knew it was not going to make it to Revolution. Like, the moment it started in November, I felt like it's going to probably be a TV special episode. It's, it's not. It's, it's a standard dynamite that they do this match, but... I, I knew this match was not going to be on the pay-per-view like everyone thinks it should be. Which... I get why people are mad that it wasn't a pay-per-view match, but at the same time, AEW doesn't want to do the 12-month pay-per-view system, or in some cases, 17. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's one of those things where you're kind of like, you have to pick your poison. You either want this on pay-per-view and, and go and do the WWE system, or you get free television content and still probably get some intriguing stuff out of it. But yeah, and then you gotta remember that the international audience are getting this unrestricted. The bestest. Ah, I mean, no offense. Anyways, so when they finally got to it, they were finally gonna announce this match. They finally had it happen. And oh my god, this is a TV classic matchup. 35 minutes. Like, I was looking at the time and I was like, wait, we're at the main event already? Oh my god. And it's 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 great. It's everything you needed, except for the commercial breaks and picture and pictures. We need that streaming platform, damn it. But besides that, <laughs> it's it's a classical TV matchup. 35 minutes, and they were saying that they were going to go ahead and extend this as much as they could. I knew that wasn't going to happen, but I knew they were going to try to do something in order to do it, and I knew I, I knew it was, and I was like, okay, you're having this little issue here. You, do you want MJF to win, or do you want Punk to win? And in regards, like, either way, they'll both come out of this looking great, and either way, they're probably going to bounce back from either loss. But at the same time, you still have the two pathways here. Because I was thinking this, when, because if MGF wins, at this point, you're, you're pretty much guaranteeing he's going to win the AEW World Championship. He's going to win the AEW World Championship this year. I have no doubt on that. And he's going to be the one that ends the fairy tale of Hangman Adam Page. But if Punk wins, you throw a curve in that, and you could go in any other direction where it could still go to MJF. But now that that doubt gets into his mind. And initially, it looked like they were ending the match a whole 30 minutes early. Because MJF, during the match, uses a tape to choke CM Punk and then tries to get the official not to see it by covering it with his elbow. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. And decided that all this stuff has to go ahead and be crazy. 
he almost gets the victory. Then he raises his hand up and the tape falls. And he's like, oh, um, you didn't see that. It's an alternative item. And the referee, because they need to mirror something with this. And in fact, CM Punk's whole storyline with MJ, whole storyline since he's been back is mirroring stuff Bret Hart did during his running WWF, which is awesome. Doing stuff that Bret Hart did to win matches or rehearse stuff. Yeah, uh, people are actually wondering if the t if the tape chokehold was actually a callback to Bret Hart. I don't know if that is the case. We'll probably get it after this video. And if it does, it, it will just be hilariously fun and awesome to see how much Bret Hart still impacts these wrestlers to these day. But like the Wardlow Punk match, where Punk defeats Wardlow the same way Bret Hart defeated Diesel at Survivor Series all those decades ago. But yeah, they, they restart the match and people are actually saying this is more like a callback somewhat to the Rock and CM Punk, where NJF wins by cheating, and then they restart the match. Feel like they should have done the lights things off just to, you know, really give it away, <laughs> and have someone power bomb them, power bomb Punk through a table. But it, in this case, NJF gets something out of this, uh, and, and NJF just sells it so well, like. And is just having fun with this. And he, Punk gets the win on several occasions, but ultimately, Wardlow comes out. He stomps down towards the ring. He's looking conflicted, like, huh, do I help Punk or do I let him get killed, kill MJF, or do I throw MJF in the ring and cause a destructional ending? Or do I help MJF and get my paycheck out of this? Well, Wardlow then just makes his way out, stares down at, at Punk, but because MJF doesn't want to lose to be a disqualification, probably is his reasoning. He steps out of the way, and the fans go ballistic, like, yeah, Wardlow's doing it! Punk gets back in the ring, throws him into the ring, stares down Wardlow, and Wardlow is just looking at him as the referee's also Chris telling him to, to not attack Punk. And then BAM! MGF hits him with the diamond ring. And one, two, three! MJF wins, and the streak of CM Punk is over. And now. It's guaranteed now. At this point, I I'm going to call it MGF is now guaranteed the world title this year. Like, you don't beat CM Punk and think he's not going to win the world title this year. There is a plan here. I know for, I believe for a fact that MGF is now on his way to championship glory. So, get ready for that. But then, an ingenious move here, instead of having MGF just have the diamond ring in his tights and hide it as a backup plan, because that would have been weird, uh, they instead, and not do the William Regal stuff, instead they have Wardlow, when he steps over MGF and stares down Punk, um, he drops the ring behind him and lets MGF get it. And I was like, good, that's actually kind of interesting, that's kind of a special idea. So, who knows there? Instead of being so overt, instead of doing the William Regal stuff that, that he that Regal used to do with the brass knuckles, where he hides in his his trunks or his knee pads or everything, but and, and the referee would have to search it. Instead, he could have an outside interference, just hot, just subtly drop it to MJF, and even the contests were caught by surprise. So I was like. Cunning Casanova bastard. But, yeah. NJF is now the best in the world! And the reign of terror continues as now he has a huge momentum on his way. I mean, like, you don't beat CM Punk and get not get a chance to win the title this year. Like, I am still certain as Wardlow continues his Batista-like run, where he looks like he's gonna help. Like, people are hoping Wardlow turns on MJF soon. 
I'm still thinking they're going to do the slow burn approach where they're going to do it like he's Batista, where it's going to build up to it, and then they're going to go the giant route with MJF, with giant Hogan route when the NWO kicked him out, where MJF wins the title, but Warlow wins the tournament to become the number one contender for the world title, and, you know, MJF's the champion and Warlow's the challenger. And then when MGF continues to dodge the question and they don't do the tile match at Winter is Coming, Wardlow just has enough and grabs MGF by the throat and says, That's all! I want the gold! And whatnot. And MGF has to use his four horsemen and any outside forces to help take him out. Yeah. So basically, we cut, we do NWO kicks out the giant, but with less idiotic racism and, and idiots, aka Hulk Hogan, and bigots and idiot and horrible people. I wonder if Big Sh if Paul White will will reference that, reference the kick out, if Warlow, if that's the route they go with Warlow and uh, MJF. <laughs> During his brief t during his little time in the NWO, but yeah, congrats to MJF. You did it. You did it. You beat your hometown. You he, you pissed off Chicago. You've ended the hometown hero's return. Now you gotta wait a couple months and end the fairy tale. Give you fun, fun wild. And now we wonder where they go from here because AEW doesn't do rematches that quickly that often, except for Christian and Kenny Omega, though I feel like that was partly because of the partnership they had with Impact at the time. Though that also seems to be getting back in the swing thing since Dan Lambert's been showing up on Impact, it seems. We'll see, hopefully. But when this all breaks down, it's gonna be fun and insane. So, I'm wondering what does Punk and MJF do heading into Revolution? Do they do another match together? Do they tag team? Do they do a tag team match to balance things out? Or, and this is the big if, uh, do they go to different feuds? Like, like to an extent, Punk still has some unresolved issues with Send Hook. And MGF, well, he's MGF. He could just piss someone off in one week and build a story off of that. Like they managed to get two, managed to get a week and a half with Punk and Eddie Kingston. I think MJF can do that. But yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see where they take this. Now that MJF is now basically guaranteed his role as the next AEW World Champion with his victory over Punk. I'm looking forward to the rest of the year for MJF. We'll have to see. And we'll have to see where Hangman's story goes with him when they eventually cross paths. But <laughs> that's neither here that's that's later, but we'll see. It could happen actually sooner. They could do it at double or nothing and make it a six month reign instead of a year long reign. But it just, you know, callbacks. That's going to be a little bit while, so we'll see where that goes on for the next several months. This was Neo Reality Entertainment, the Wrestleverse, presenting MJF vs. CM Punk on AEW Dynamite 2022. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, check out my other content in the description below. Stay tuned for more. I'll see you next time. Peace and take care. And have a good day, everybody. And keep watching pro wrestling.